I'm ready to do the last bit. Uh, this here is separated there, but it's not too bad on the inside. It is actually glued together, it is in one piece. What happened was, when I was printing, the extruder was clicking, which usually means that uh, the nozzle's too close to the print. But in actual fact, I remember I ramped the speed up and it just couldn't protrude. protrude. It couldn't extrude. Is that the word? It couldn't extrude quick enough. Uh, just a word of warning. I, I, this, I wanted to do, give this as many coats as possible in as least amount of time as possible and I found out that this mould release wax is highly flammable. <laughs> I've had to straighten one of them. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Uh, in hindsight maybe it is better putting bolts through uh, just to keep it all in place. I mean when this is all in and the, the pistons put in it will all stay in place anyway but there's loads of paths for resin just to come out while I'm putting everything together. Uh, tape just doesn't do it especially with this mould because it's a bit warped. I'm so glad this is the last part for a while. So glad. Just a tip make sure you've got everything set up before you even start with things like you've got to cut your carbon out you've got to get your your, your chopped toe in place you've got to get your resin your scales absolutely everything the tub the mixer everything that you need to re um, to do it all make sure that you've got it all to hand before you start mixing anything i found that out not the hard way but you know anyway with the uh, the carbon um, the weave, I know it's not going to make a lot of difference really it isn't, it's just because I want to. I'm putting chopped toe on the first layer because I need to get in the holes and I need to get around here which is where it failed last time, well it didn't fail, there was a couple of bubbles and I had to rework it so chop toe first then a layer, then I'll go, then more layers and then I'll, you know until I get to the end Okay, I'm ready to put the piston part in. I'm a bit worried this is getting hot. It shouldn't be getting that hot. <laughs> I mean, this is infusion resin. It's not, I've put 50% fast, 50% slow hardener in, but that is getting hot. It's getting hot, hot. And I'm worried that I didn't do this mold very thick. One word of warning which I've learned for the future as well. I'm, I'm learning a lot through this, through my own mistakes. Is don't skimp on time. Uh, I thought, you know, this is 20% infill and I thought it'll be fine. It will be fine for pressing the mould but I'm a bit concerned now that it's getting hot. And there's not going to be enough support structure to actually hold the heat in and it might start warping things, I don't know. Uh, another word of warning as well, when you, once you've got this carbon toe out of the bag do not put any leftovers back in because you can guarantee it'll have resin on it and it goes all, obviously it, it solidifies and then you've got chunks of very very sharp bloody carbon fibre in there when you put your hand in which is another thing I've learnt <laughs> as it keeps going through me bloody gloves that's better you don't, it's, it's a judgement call, you don't want it to be too tight but you don't want it to be too loose either I mean that'll pull up you can see the gaps on that now bloody hell one of them which way am I going that way and then one of them
that's as tight as I can possibly get it purely because it's starting to bow the center the fillet layer or whatever you call it so <laughs> don't think that you can do 20% infill because you can't it doesn't work you need to get 60% infill in there I've now got to leave this for 24 hours and then hope that it's come out of the mold it comes out of the mold properly because this is the final piece that I'm doing for a while I'm not turning my lights on because I've got natural daylight coming through the window I think I've got a bit of a problem with this uh, number one it's not actually square <laughs> it's bulged out here and also I don't know if you can see it but it's bulged out there and everything's coming apart and it delaminated as I was taking it off in actual fact it looks like it's already separated there oh it has this is all because I didn't do I didn't print it with that much infill because of the exothermic heat that was generated by the curing process what has happened is where the filament wasn't actually there because of the infill because I only used 20% it's actually melted it and it's bubbled it into that recess that it's made now I think this is going to be bigger than the part that I need so I've got sanding to do Well, I don't really want to go any further at the minute. Uh, there's a piece on the corner which I haven't got rid of the resin sort of marks on. Uh, I'm going to tidy the edges up and then I'll move on to this side, try and flatten it off a bit. I'm having half a millimetre or thereabouts of resin coat on the top so I've got to allow for that. So that's half a mil and half a mil, so that's one millimetre. Uh, but anyway, I'll start tidying the rest of it up now Well, I've got it to the state where uh, it's not looking too bad. Uh, obviously, I've got the seam in the middle, which I've still got to fill. Uh, the swinging arm, sorry, the torque arm, that's going to fit there, obviously. So I'll give it a resin coat and everything will be perfect. I I've just spent 10 minutes recording. Um, oh, fucking hell. I'm going to do this in XCR epoxy coating resin. 10 grams of this and 4.1 grams of hardener. Now I do apologise to those people who have been with me for a while. Um, I need to explain again because there are some newcomers. The reason why this is taking me so long is because I have got problems with, with, with well, it's not my back, it's my leg. Um, I've got nerve end damage or something like that and I can only sit up for a certain amount of time. 
on a good day it's two hours, on a bad day I don't get out of bloody bed. So yes, it does take me a lot longer to do things than normal. Normal people, healthy people, you lucky bastards. I'm going to get me a blow lamp and just flash it over. And anybody who didn't know, a normal blow lamp will get rid of any surface bubbles. So you flash over it like that, you leave it for about 5 or 10 minutes and you do it again. I usually do it three times. So I've got to leave that now 12 hours, around about 12 hours for it to go off. These are the swinging arms which have been cut. That hole isn't exactly in the middle, it is in the middle of the original size hole. I know that for definite because when I put these things back to back I drilled straight through that one so I know it's square. It's in the right place anyway. I've been thinking of a way to mount the bushes or bushings or whatever you want to call them which have got to go in here. Now the original ones on this they were just literally pressed in. Now, these holes ain't cut straight so they were coming out very very, I mean it's a minuscule amount, slightly on the skew. So what I thought was I've made these holes slightly bigger, I've keyed the bushes, uh, the outer part of the bushes up, so these can go in here and now with that bushing in there it can, it can move, it's still free, believe me it's free, and it's the same on the other one so it can actually rotate a bit. So what I'm going to do is, oh that is on purpose by the way, <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in here, I've got one there and obviously I've got one there and then I'm going to put, this is the same size bar as the suspension that goes through. So now I've got the two bushes in there and I've also got um, the outer race or whatever you want to call them. I've decided the best option is to put two of these, uh, these are upholstery, not upholstery, trim removers for cars. Thanks to whoever suggested I get them. They are going to help me massively to get the uh, bits out of the moulds. Anyway, I've decided I'll bolt it. I'm going to bolt it in the middle, put two separators there so at least I've got some clearance on there. And then one by one, I'm going to put epoxy on it, push it into place, and hope and pray that I can get the bar out after. <laughs> yes, I'll put release agent on the bar so it doesn't stick to anything. And then once the epoxy's on, I'll just squeeze that into there. Job done. They've got to be absolutely perfectly parallel, which they are now. So I'll do that, and then I can put the suspension on.